Hello, everyone. Uh, the Australian Red Cross Blood Service has been saving lives since 1929, which some days feels like about as long as I've been working in marketing. And just to give you some context to my slightly clickbaity title, I think, um, for my entire career, I've tended to say when things aren't quite working and you just know they're not gonna come together, you know, we're not saving lives, let's just go to the pub. But when you are actually working for a place that saves lives, um, which I moved into a year ago, I've had to rethink that strategy a little bit. So um, let's move ahead in time. Here's a photo of the blood service from the early 60s. And you know, a lot's changed since then. Our mobile vans are not as cool as that anymore. Um, and of course, technology has changed a huge amount since then, and we've had some tremendous medical advancements. But in a lot of ways, the way we connect with donors and the way we engage them and recruit them has kind of remained the same. But we find ourselves now at a really crucial point in our 90-year history, where if we're not starting to think really carefully and look really closely at how we evolve our marketing, we're potentially putting the lives of tens of thousands of Australians at risk. Because it's not just that our customers and the channels that we use are becoming increasingly more complex, but the actual baseline job that we need to do is so much more complicated than I ever could have realised when I came into this job a year ago. Sometimes it can feel a little bit like I'm trying to fly a plane in challenging conditions. So here is my plane console up here. Let me explain a little bit. So each year we need to collect 1.3 million individual donations. And to do that, we have to maintain an annual donor panel. That's people who've donated in 12 months. And we have to bring in almost 100,000 new donors each year. And we also need to make sure we're getting the right quantities of the right sorts of blood. So that's A, Bs and O types. Not too little and not too much because blood doesn't keep forever. You can't just stick it in the freezer. And we also have to make sure we're hitting targets at a state level so we can quickly and efficiently get the right types of blood to the patients that need them in the hospitals. So from a marketing perspective, it makes it really complicated because we can't just choose the market where we're maybe getting the most traction and just crank it because that's not how our supply model works. And sometimes we might run a little bit low on blood. Don't worry, everyone, we never run out of blood. Um, and we have PR, which is a really amazing tool for us. And that's my big red button there, the big red PR button. Um, and when we push that, it can generate a huge amount of earned media, and that can solve an immediate problem and bring in lots of new donors, but it's really hard for us to control and manage. So, let's get back to the business of saving lives. This financial year, we have to grow our annual panel by 70,000 people. So that's a combination of bringing in new donors and increasing the frequency and retention of existing donors. So we're growing it from 460,000 to 485,000. And compared to previous years, that is a really big increase for us. And we don't have any additional marketing budget to do that with. We've got a growing population, we've got a aging population, and we've got a lot more treatable medical con conditions, thank goodness, that can benefit from blood products. So when we look to the future, when we look ahead to 2023, we need to grow that panel to 530,000, which is another 45,000 people. These are really ambitious goals for us, and if we're not rethinking the way we're using our marketing to grow our panel, we might not make it. Traditional marketing levers like TV and PR and local marketing, they are always going to play a big part for us. They're really important. But that megaphone approach, just spray and pray, it is just not going to cut it for us anymore. So that's why we're having to think a lot harder about the role of digital marketing in our business and how we need it to work for us. So we're moving from that megaphone approach to what I like to call the mixing desk approach, where we can be a lot more targeted, more personalised, more agile about exactly we wanted, what we want our marketing to deliver. 
So I'm now gonna share with you a couple of hurdles that we need to overcome to make this happen and um, share with you some of the work that we're kicking off to make this happen. And I would say this is an intimidating crowd being at an Adobe Symposium. So um, we are really at the beginning of our digital transformation journey in marketing. And um, some of you might say, meh, I've done that before. It's not such a big deal. But um, for us, it is really transformative. So um, please go easy on me. Um, so the first challenge we have is getting people to become donors in the first place. This year, we need 94,000 of them. And when you think about it, that's actually a lot because we're asking people to give up about an hour of their time to come in, sit in a chair, and let us stick a needle in them and take out their blood. And I should say, the needle is really easy. It doesn't hurt. Um, but the good news is that when you talk to people, the vast majority of them think that donating blood is a great idea and they're really open to doing it. But only 3% of people actually go on to do it. So we've got this massive gap between intent and action. Well, why is that? Why do people think it's a good idea and not do it? Well, it's not that they're bad people. They're just busy and life just gets in the way. There's other stuff to do. So the challenge for us is to close that gap between intent and action. Um, earlier this year, we launched a campaign that aimed to do exactly that and drive urgency by highlighting the fact that donated blood has a finite shelf life of just 42 days. Here's an image from the campaign up here. And we've had some fantastic success with this campaign, but unfortunately, we just don't have the media spend to be everywhere at once. So we're really starting to look at how we can deliver this message to people in a much more targeted way. So we've done some initial experiments where we localized some of our Facebook ads, just using some simple geo-targeting and including the name of the center. So this makes it a lot more relevant to specific markets and helps us drive urgency. And we know this works because as soon as we did it, we, start, we saw a 16% uplift in appointments. So our next step, and this is a big step for us, is to create individual ads for every single donor center. There's almost 100 of them in the country. So we need to factor in the requirements of the, each donor center when we do this, thinking about how many collections and how many appointments we need. So we're moving to dynamic trigger-based communications with every center set up individually in a DMP. And this is really exciting for us because it's gonna allow us to start experimenting with different types of messages. So you can see up here, um, so we can drive urgency when we've got specific demands by being really precise and specific about what we need, or we can use positive social norms to reinforce good behavior. And then the really good thing is, as well as allowing us to become a lot more responsive to the needs of individual centers, we're also heaps less reliant on traditional market research. So we're able to test messages in real time, see how different audiences, different channels, um, all respond. So, we're using our data to drive dynamic advertising, and that addresses our first hurdle around urgency. So, people see the ads, they book an appointment, problem solved, right? Mm -mm. Because the next challenge we have is getting people to show up. And more than 50% of first-time donors who make an appointment don't actually show up for that, their appointment. So if inertia was our big problem before, fear is really our big enemy here. A lot of people go into their appointment, they make their appointment, they're in a really cool, level-headed state. Yep, I'm gonna make an appointment to donate blood, it's a really good thing to do, I'll save some lives, I'll make an appointment. But as that appointment gets closer, they think, oh, I'm gonna be donating blood. Shit, they're gonna stick a needle in me. And they freak out a little bit and around half of them don't show up. That's one of the reasons, not the only one, but it's a big one for us. So a big thing for us is trying to mitigate that anxiety, and we're doing a lot of different things um, to try and reduce that fear factor. And one of the things we're experimenting with, trying to make the whole process just feel less transactional and more human, is trialing personalized emails, where we actually show the donor center that they'll see when they get there. So they'll see the person who'll greet them, the, the physical environment of the center. So as well as making that experience just feel a lot more familiar and hopefully a lot less scary, it also makes it a lot less anonymous and potentially 
it's a bit harder to drop out where you can actually see the person who's going to be waiting there to greet you at the other end. Okay, so we've driven urgency, we've got people to make an appointment, we've got them to show up for their appointment, so surely now I can down tools and go to the pub, right? Mm -mm. No, there's one more challenge we face, and that's getting them to actually come back. Because 44% of our first time donors, we never see them again. Um, and it's not that they've had a really bad time. A lot of them say it was terrific. They, they enjoyed the experience. But again, life just gets in the way and it's really hard to form a habit with something that you only do every three months. And this is a really big focus area and we spend a lot of time thinking and working on this problem. But one of the most effective things we've found is also one of the simplest. It's sending people who donate an SMS message. Um, any, of you, any of you who've donated, hopefully there are a few here, might have received this. And it just tells the person where their blood is, uh, where it's saving lives. Um, and as well as being content that people just love, um, you only need to look at our social media feeds to see how much people like to share this. Um, it's also a big trigger for them to rebook because they can actually see the benefit of their donation and it becomes tangible and personal. So, if we can find ways to overcome these three hurdles, we feel pretty confident as a team that we can grow our panel and reach those really ambitious goals. And as far as I'm concerned, we kind of have to because it's not like jobs that I've had in my career where I'm working in banks or retailers or energy companies where you can just go, meh, it's not as if we're saving lives because we actually are saving lives. So if I can leave you with just one thing today, uh, there's a lot of you here, so I'm, I'm counting on the numbers with all of you. It's um, a mo motivation to go and um, donate blood. Maybe some of you have done it before, but not for a while. Maybe some of you never have. Um, I encourage you all to go out and donate. Um, so I'm gonna show you one piece of content we developed earlier this year with our creative and media partners, Cummins and Partners, um, and this content is designed to inspire you to do exactly that. The tension was unbearable. All right, said Deep Thought. The answer to the great question of life, the universe, and everything is 42. Thank you so much, everyone.